So explainer videos are hot right now, and I mean like sizzling hot, you know, like hot, hot. So we're gonna talk about three explainer video techniques to help you produce awesome work, whether it's for your business or for your clients right here in Illustrator and After Effects. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I hope everyone is having an awesome day today. It's kind of hot here in Florida, speaking of hot and sizzling. But this tutorial is gonna be extremely helpful for anyone that's looking to put together a full motion graphic video. So if you have no experience with Adobe Illustrator to After Effects workflow, I highly suggest taking a look at our basic explainer video tutorial. I'll link that in the description. But if you wanna pick up these three quick techniques really quick to help you improve your work, let's jump right into it. So our three techniques are gonna include how to animate objects, people, and also how to integrate the right titles into your work to help put together a full explainer video. So let's jump into our first technique, which is gonna talk about how to animate objects. You can always download our project files for free and follow along for our tutorial. Now, we're gonna be animating all these objects individually, but of course, you need to watch the tutorial on how this workflow works so you can work on your own vector object because everything starts off in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm not gonna go through the process here because we've done this a handful of times. So go ahead and check our links in the description. But you need to make sure that every object that you want to animate inside of After Effects is in its own layer in Adobe Illustrator. It's really easy to do this. Remember, just go ahead and go to the description and watch our tutorial on this full workflow if you're new to this. But those of you that want to talk about how we can quickly animate a ton of objects really quick because we have a lot of animation and we want to put as much detail into this as possible to bring high levels of production value. So essentially, we want to be able to copy paste our animations really quick. So we'll come here to our big object right here and I just got to animate this in. So we'll just hit S on keyboard for scale and we'll also hit shift R for rotation and we can add a keyframe for scale and rotation. Okay, we can bring these keyframes forward in time just by a little bit and then we can also take that rotation keyframe and bring it all the way to the end of our animation, let's say six seconds. So we'll set our rotation to 1x. This way it'll be rotating the entire time and we'll have some constant animation. Then we can go here to scale and bring this down to 0%. So this way it'll be animated and ends constantly rotating. And then we can make the scale keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And that is really cool. So what we can do here is grab all of our keyframes that we've created, copy them, and we can go to other objects here. So I got an object right here and I can paste that in there. And now it's constantly going to be in there. And I'll just go to every standard object that we have here and I'm going to paste those uh, keyframes in there. It's a pretty neat way to populate the scene, but I don't want to start there. What I want to do is maybe just offset some of these layers individually so they don't come in at the same time. So this is another cool technique to be able to offset your animations so it looks like you do a little bit more work than what you actually have done and it's really quick. So not everything coming in at the same time, it just as a nice touch to the overall animation. Another thing you can do to some of them is say like our big object here, we hit P on keyboard for position, go to the beginning of your timeline and add a keyframe for that go to the end of our animation and we can just slightly move it over to make it look like it's gonna be floating around our comp. So you can see just adding a little bit of a nice position animation to some of the objects can help bring out the value even more. So some other constant animations you could think about is doing repeatable scale animations. So you see we have like a microscope here and a plant. We can constantly be able to animate those out to create more of a parallax movement between you know, our static objects, which will be our person. Now we'll take our microscope and we come here to the pan behind tool here at the top and you can move where you want this animation to be. So we're going to constantly be scaling this. So I'll bring that pan behind tool anchor point right at the bottom. Then we'll hit S on keyboard for scale and we'll add a keyframe for it and we'll move it forward. Also the scale down to 0%. So we're doing that same animation again. So it just pops up in there, but I'll come here to the end of our animation and I'll just be scaling it up continuously. And make sure you turn on your little vector icon right here so you don't lose any fidelity. And we can also come here and copy this animation. And then I can paste that same animation to our plant as well. And it'll be constant animation in here, which is nice. So with these very simple copy and paste animation methods, you can animate a ton of objects in your scene fairly quickly and a very important aspect to just bring in more detail to your explainer video compositions so people don't get bored. There's always something interesting to look at. So now that we have some of the more basic you know, vector objects animated. Now we can move into animating people, which are a little bit more complex, but still very easy to do. So animating a person, there's two different ways to do it. So we're gonna do it the easy After Effects way where you don't have to preset anything up. So we, right here, we have our person. We also have in this layer the, you know, 
computer and a desk that's okay you know we can work around that and still animate our character so all we're going to do is grab the puppet pin tool here at the top and we're just going to lock down a ton of points on the desk here so we don't animate the desk and also on the laptop anything in your case that's not the person make sure you have that completely locked down so when we do animate it this does not get affected which is highly important you can do a ton of points so now when you have your lockdown pins what we can do is animate our person so we'll add some points like some key points to be on the head on the hair if we want on the chest here on the elbow on the other elbow and also our hand and then we'll simply come here and we can move forward here and just kind of wiggle our elbow here we can also kind of animate the hair if we want it's kind of weird but heck you know whatever it works we can also move the head out by a little bit we can also move the chest bring up the other elbow bring down the hand make it look like we're doing something don't be anything crazy because you could distort the image but a little bit is okay and then we can hit you on keyboard and bring up all of our active keyframes and right here we have our keyframes and what i suggest doing is just stagger your current keyframes a little bit so the animation isn't all going like back and forth in any direction so it's like kind of random and then we can move forward to the end of our animation and just grab those points and animate them in another direction and of course make sure to stagger those keyframes as well so you know it makes it a little bit more random a very important technique in this process and now we have a very slight overall animation on our person to make it look like they are come to life. Now, another technique you can do with people is obviously you kind of want them to blank too. This is a cool, subtle technique and very easy to do, especially when you're working with vector objects that have a solid color like this. And we can do this very easy in After Effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Layer, New, Solid. And we'll just call it Blank. And we're going to grab the Eyedropper tool. And we'll grab that character's color around their face. Click OK. And I'll come here and I'll turn off our blink layer and solo our person. Grab our blink layer and lock that. And we'll grab the pen tool here. And we, what we can do is just draw a mask around the eyes like this. OK, make sure that's on your blink layer. You can turn it back on and see the eyes are now being covered up. So what we'll do is just bring the in point in bring the out point in as well kind of keep it up there for like a couple of frames blinks and then we can duplicate our blink layer offset it by a few seconds so now if we scrub through this you'll see that there's a nice slight blink to this which really just brings us to the next level because this is attention to detail small things like this can really help make a huge difference in your scene so now we generally have our entire vector object animated and now that we have people animated, now we can talk about just putting together some very nice text to communicate your message, whether you have a voiceover or not. Now, when you use titles of explainer videos, they really need to be effective. Like, you know, you shouldn't use titles if the voiceover is already saying it, right? I mean, unless you don't have like a scene, that's a whole nother story. But in this case, I want to be able to put impact on the title, draw attention to it because perhaps it's a call to action. Maybe it's like subscribe to us or call us here or whatever it is. We want to be able to draw attention to that. So let me teach you how you can put together an effective title in an explainer video. So what we're going to do is go to layer new null object and we're going to parent everything to the null object. Okay. And then what we can do is just hit S and shift P to bring up position on that null object. And we'll add a keyframe for both of those. And we'll set those keyframes, I don't know, like in the middle of the animation or something. And a little bit past those initial keyframes. You know, we'll bring down the scale. It's created a new background here so I didn't have to parent that as well. And we'll bring down the position and we'll just move the scene over. So we'll have some room for some titles here. Right, so now you have all this space right here for a title that won't be, you know, in the way of your scene. So then you can come here and bring in a title. So there's a lot of animations that we can do, but I'll do something quite brief. So we can come into our title, open it up and go to animate and we'll add a position and then click on the add button and go to property and add an opacity. We'll set the opacity down 0%, open up range selector one and add a keyframe for start. We we'll move forward in time by a little bit and set the start up to 100%. Then go to the advanced tab and we can do from characters to words. So now that our animation is all said and done here and we go to our title, this is a good way to command your audience's eyes to whatever you're trying to say. So we've got the animation here and boom, it goes right to the title, whatever that may be. So think about how you can draw your audience to your title if that's what's important. That's your goal as a, just a video editor or a video creator. 
is to command the attention of whoever watching your video. So this is a good little small technique to bring up your titles. So if you're looking to spice up your projects, I wanna give a shout out to our motion graphic starter pack. So here's our motion graphic starter pack in its own extension right here in After Effects. And we have 500 elements currently in this pack, ranging from titles, accent motion graphics, animated backgrounds, logo animations, and transitions. And speaking of commanding your audience attention, we have titles of accent graphics that we can easily just click apply when we want to apply a title. And within the click of a button, we have this full After Effects title template with accent graphics already applied to it. And we can easily go into that composition, go into our title, and obviously change out our title to whatever we need it to say. Then if you need to change any colors to any of the graphics or anything, everything's going to be in a control layer, very easy to change. And then it fully updates your composition really quick and then of course if you want to spruce up your just explainer videos or any project that you're working on we come here to motion graphics we have 160 pre-made motion graphics but we can come here to clusters which i love clusters so much this is why we built this pack to help spruce up your work we can preview anything we want to apply before we apply and we find something just click on apply and now we have our cluster applied to our composition and you can easily control where those objects go with our regular motion graphics and easily change the color and help bring more attention to whatever you're working on with our motion graphics. And we have many other elements in our full pack of 500 in our motion graphics starter pack. So if you wanna check out our motion graphics starter pack, that link will be in the description. So if you do pick up our motion graphics starter pack or anything on our website, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. So that concludes this tutorial on these three explainer video techniques. If you're just starting out and you wanna learn this completely from scratch, go ahead and check our links in the description. We've recently have done a full tutorial on how to take a vector explainer video from the start to end. So if you want to watch that full video, go ahead and check the links in the description. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it valuable. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. Always be creating.